And we got some modules here. Then you try the BCM. There's a gas pedal. No, what else? There's the engine computer. Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. 2007 Cadillac EXT just got towed in from New York City about five hours away. The owner said he's, I think he bought it at an auction or something. It had issues, so he took it to shops, he took it to dealers, he tried to fix it himself. This thing has some kind of electrical ghost. You can see some of the parts replaced here. Uh, he didn't fire the parts kind of too hard. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Probably a transmission controller, a throttle body. Uh, he tried a different ECM, which wasn't programmed, so that didn't work out. He put the original one back in. And we've got some modules here. Then you try the ECM. There's a gas pedal. No, what else? There's the engine computer. So obviously first thing we want to do is do a health report. And with the Think Tool Pros, this is as the car showed up in the engine control module. We have uh, TCM, lost communication with TCM, lost communication with ABS, lost communication with BCM. The TCM, we can talk to it, but it says control module, communication bus A off, lost com with engine computer. The body control module can't talk to vehicle dynamics. The radio can't talk to, uh, let's see, lost communication with BCM. So a lot of communication codes. So right off the bat, we go to all data and pull up the OEM information bus diagrams. So this is the entire OEM, uh, all the pages. So we have low speed bus, which is on pin one, you see there's a splice pack. We have passenger door, driver's door, articulating running boards, all this fun stuff. HVAC, uh, VCIM, auxiliary, body control module, theft deterrent module. Um, it keeps going. Rear seat, so all the accessory stuff. And then there's another splice pack in the back. Memory seats, heated seats. This thing is pretty loaded. High speed bus. Okay, so pin 6 and 14 on the DLC go to our BCM, so that's like the gateway, talks between the high and the low speed. Transmission controller, engine control module, there's a terminating resistor right there. And then we have the vehicle communication interface, and then the next page, electronic brake control module, there's a transfer case shift control module. I don't know if this thing has four wheel drive. And then the suspension control module. Okay, we have that on the scanner. That's probably the dynamics control. No theft deterrent instrument, HVAC. So basically what I want to do, considering this is happening right now, something is clicking in this box down here, I'm going to set up the oscilloscope with a breakout box. Pin 1, that's channel 3, low speed can, and then pin 6 and 14 are the high speed can, which I printed out. So we're measuring at the DLC. Let's take a look at what the scope is showing right now with the key on. So if we increase our, or decrease the time base, it 
low speed can, zero to five volts, that looks pretty good. What do we see on the high speed? So let's take a couple of screens here and zoom in. That looks like garbage. We want to be biased at two and a half volts, but the A, the bias voltage is lifted and if I turn the key off, let's see if this thing will go to sleep. It's going to sleep. Okay. So it goes to sleep fairly quickly. And okay. So that voltage is not zero. There's still something happening on the low speed. So if I put the key in, nothing happens. If I turn it to accessory, we saw right here that the network was actually good for a little while and then a module apparently woke up and started messing with the bias voltage and basically destroying our entire signal right there and on the next page elevated bias voltage so, so what, what's the plan of attack here what's the quickest thing we can do to get a good direction. You know, how many modules do we have on this high speed can? Well, DLC, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can we split the network somewhere, somewhere convenient? Keep in mind, we have a terminating resistor right there. Um, we can keep looking at the scope and just like unplug the EBCM. They'll at least eliminate that and the ESC that's under the truck, pretty easy to get to. Transfer case shift control module, not exactly sure where that is, but yeah, that's the game plan. So back to the Cadillac Escalade. Had to take a quick trip with my brother on uh, vintage bikes. Uh, up to northern Pennsylvania, so had a great weekend there. Back to this diagnosis. So we definitely saw on the scope that the high-speed can was misbehaving. Um, one check you can do is sh you know shut the vehicle off, take the key out, let it go to sleep and measure the resistance between pin 6 and 14 just with a regular ohm meter. So let's take a look at the wiring diagram one more time. So if we measure the resistance here, we see there are two 120 ohm terminating resistors. One is after uh, inside the ECM, the engine control module, and the other one is right here after the electronic suspension control module, 120 ohms. So we expect to see 60 ohms on a good network. Well, what do we see? We see 103 ohms. Interesting. So we expect 60 and the resistance is too high. It's not 120, but it's not 60. Uh, so, it seems like there might be a poor connection somewhere in the circuit. Now, 
I measured it yesterday, it was like 95. When I started it up today, it was like 116. But that it's that's a bad reading, and that's a great way to you know, diagnose uh, an open or partially open circuit. So what I want to do is um, so we have like two branches here basically. This is one branch, 120 ohms, and the other one goes through the EBCM, the electronic suspension control module. We don't have the transfer case shift control module since uh, this is the not the NP8 uh, version. And so let's see here. So what I want to do is unplug the EBCM. It's right under the truck. So just unplug this. And if our resistance goes up to 120, we'll know that at least this portion of the network is fine. That really narrows, narrows things down. Um, depending on the result of that test, we can find these pins, just jump across there, and then if our resistance goes to zero, then we'll know that the wiring to here is good and we'll just need to worry about this last leg of the network. So let's jump under the truck. Grab our ohm meter so we can just see it right here. Here's our EBCM. I'll figure out how to unlatch this thing. There's a little lock. I just push that okay so let's keep watching our ohm meter we're at 120 right now so something I think changed right there we're still at 120 okay perfect let's plug it back in we're still at 120 so exactly like I hoped we just narrowed down the issue now this connector is actually busted you can see the pin right there is not good so in order to latch this thing I think that should do it. look 60 ohms. <laughs> you guys see that? 60 ohms. Perfect. So this connector wasn't seated all the way. Oh man. Wouldn't that be the most epic? No parts required fix. The owner won't believe it. So let's plug in the scope, turn the truck on, run it. If the network is perfect, we're done. All right, so this is our waveform from last time. So let's go ahead and run the scope. And we'll put the marker at two and a half volts. Turn the key on, and I'm pretty sure everything will be good. Just beautiful. zoom in it's a nice looking can waveform just just perfect so I'll save this let's uh, plug the scanner in clear all the codes out and that problem of the truck that's it we're done so I did a full code scan here and something weird is going on we can only talk to the modules on the high-speed can what happened to all of the other modules on the low speed. Um, I don't know, let's just save this report.
and figure out why it's not talking to anything else. I mean, the HVAC works, radio works. We're definitely talking on the scope. So it doesn't see any of the other modules. So let's just clear DTCs. At least in these modules. Okay. Let's see what base brake system pressure circuit. Okay. Right rear actuator circuit open. That's in the electronic suspension control. All right. Um, so back out. Let's do the key off. Let the network go to sleep. There we go. The bias voltage should drop. There you go. Alright. Let's just start it up and do another code scan. Service tire monitor system, service suspension system, okay, or at least our fuel gauge is not going crazy. I'm just going to try a smart scan again. Why the heck is it not talking to any, like, the instrument panel cluster? It should talk to it. That blows my mind. It doesn't make any sense to me. The can is fine. The low speed can is fine. I mean, this shouldn't matter if we plug the scanner in through the breakout box or not, but we can always try. go back smart scan again huh you talk to the amp There we go. That kind of blows my mind. So talking through the breakout box, didn't like that. Now we're, everything's back online. So keep that variable in the back of your head. I've never seen this before. But I don't think the breakout box should be messing with the signals, but apparently, at least with the ThinkTool Pros, on this vehicle, they didn't like communicating through the through the bob. Um, so we got we got plenty of plenty of codes here. So I'll do another report. repair open lost count with radio lost count with B BCM faster door switch so all this stuff 
Low tire pressure system sensors now learned. We can take care of that with the Autel if the sensors are alive. Okay, so again, let's clear DTCs. I like seeing the tree turn from red to green. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 modules in this thing. System configuration error in the remote control door lock receiver. Okay. Base brake system pressure circuit. We'll look that up. Lost communication with telematic control module. So I don't know what this telematic control module is. Don't really care. Okay, let's shut it off. Let it go to sleep, rescan it. And you know, the customer wants this truck ironed out so it's ready to go to California and back. Um, so we'll address any other remaining issues. But that was it for the network diagnosis. Sometimes it takes hours, sometimes it takes only minutes, but the approach is very similar. Get the scope on the network, if it's messed up, you know, turn the car off, measure the resistance on the high speed between the two, the high and the low. Our resistance was not 60, so there's, it was a partial open. Um, luckily, wherever we split the system, that's where the open was. Plug the EVCM back in. I don't know why that connector snapped. I mean, this car is at the auction, so probably long, uh, interesting history. But plugged it back in, perfect. 60 ohms great you know signals on the scope so we know we fixed the problem and that was the problem um, now we just have a couple extra details maybe maybe we'll leave that for the bonus footage um, but that's it for this one thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time bye bye So a little bonus footage on the Cadillac Escalade. It runs top notch, simply beautiful. Um, the owner wanted me to take it on the highway, make sure it's perfect, he wants to take it to California. Um, anyways, everything works perfectly except for the cruise control. Now it's kind of important for a long road trip, so he wants that diagnosed obviously. And I scanned the vehicle for codes again, And there was one code stored in the engine computer, brake switch circuit one, high voltage, P0573. Let's look that up. Would that disable cruise control? I'm pretty sure it would. So this is the code description for the, for the P0573. Brake switch circuit one, high voltage. And action taken, the cruise control system becomes inoperative. So the buttons themselves work in the BCM I, in um, live data, all the buttons do what they're supposed to, but this brake switch is not allowing the cruise control to set. So let's look at a wiring diagram. Uh, there's actually a, apparently a TSB here. And the switch that we're worried about this is the cruise control diagram there's a stop lamp switch A and B light blue white and pink uh, if we go to the brake 
lighting diagram, this stop lamp switch is actually a four wire unit. So two of the wires come from the BCM, that controls the brake lights, that works fine. This one, the second switch, is I guess normally open and that goes to, you know, it's fed from a fuse, so constant power, then when you press the brake, it sends power to the ECM, the TCM, um, basically everything drivability wise. So, if we go to live data and cruise control data, there's brake pedal position circuit signal and brake pedal position signal. <laughs> so the, those are the two switches. So right now, this one says applied, this one says released. If I press the brake pedal, that one says applied and the the brake lights do work. However, this one stays applied. I think that's our short um, short to voltage. It just always says applied. This is why the cruise control is not turning on. So let's measure the voltage on A, this light blue and white wire. So I hooked up a voltmeter to that wire and the switch itself lives right here. See it's a four wire circuit. Top wire is the one we're worried about. So obviously the pink wire is hot since that um, light blue and white wire stays high. If we unplug this, that voltage should drop and our scan data should say released. So let me just unplug the brake switch. Let me just remove this vent thing if I can. Let me just get rid of that. Okay, so I unplugged it. It says released, that says applied. So we know pins are good, the feed is good, wiring is good. This switch itself seems to be faulty. Let's plug it back in. See that went to applied, that went to released. So, if I just fiddle with the switch, if I just kind of press on it, there we go, released, applied. So I think the switch itself, let's see, press the brake pedal, applied, applied, that sticks applied. That's our problem. Let me take the switch off, see if we can do a no parts required repair. If we can't, we'll order a new one, they're pretty cheap. So, let's do that. All right, here we go. Kind of a silly looking brake switch. It's all gooped up in grease, but let's measure the resistance across those two terminals. Right now, it's open circuit, so the brakes should say released. If I press this button right in here, so when you press the brake pedal, the actual rod comes through here and there's a pin so when that's pressed you see the resistance goes to zero released resistance goes to infinity so it looks like the brake switch is doing what it should Hmm. Let's try the other two pins. Those should be normally closed according to the diagram. And they are. See the resistance is zero. So we press this. It goes to open. It goes to closed. So so far the parts cannon would not have fixed this problem. It might be 
problem with the actual positioning of the switch if that rod is somehow just slightly tweaking because you know when I wiggled it it did go to the right pid but then it got stuck high again let's see so now we see the why the problem occurs so the brake switch is installed on the actual pedal and the rod and you can see the resistance is zero on those two circuits so that would set their high voltage code if I just tweak it a hair move it up right there the resistance goes to infinity but if I let it drop just a hair like that it closes the contact so this is switch is too sensitive that button is just touched by the weight of this switch it will stay closed so we can take this apart and see if we can just tweak a contact in there instead of replacing the entire thing and by the way it's super easy to remove you just undo the clip obviously and then slide the whole shebang sideways and pop it off it looks like you can take it apart let's see if we can fix this no parts required all right let's pop this sucker open should be pretty easy to do I think <laughs> Now, here are the guts, there's a slider, there's the little contact. So we are worried about the top two that are always closed. So when this thing tweaks it just a hair, see this one's normally closed and it opens when you press the switch. This one is normally open and does it close when you press the switch? Let's see. Oh, there's like a little cam in there. So that's just too sensitive. This is pressed a hair. See that contact closes. So what can we do to fix that? Contact closes too early. Let me let me figure this out. All right. So in this case, 200,000 miles did some wear on this plastic little plastic cam. You can see there's a it's just hollowed out that hole, and this little leg right here is supposed to push this open and it's barely touching so these pins can stay stuck closed so it does need a new brake switch I'll get one ordered up we can use an aftermarket one uh, it's a pretty simple device nothing smart about it and this truck should be fixed so I just got off the phone with the customer to uh, so make sure he okays the cruise control repair he's like look in the back seat I ordered some more parts and one of those parts was the exact part that we need a brand new brake light switch AC Delco uh, to replace this thing how often do you find that the customer brings the exact right parts before even diagnosing the problem that's pretty cool so he'll save a little money on that uh, let's pop this thing in make sure the brake pedal works perfectly and make sure the cruise control works okay let's bench test this brand new OEM switch real quick so it's open circuit And you have to depress it quite a bit okay this should work perfectly let's pop it in the truck all right so super easy pop off the brake rod 
slide the switch on there and slide the whole thing back on. Like so. Let's plug it in. Look at the scan data and then we'll put this little clip back on here. I think it went like this. So you gotta push it in, slide it up, and then put this bolt right in here. Okay, that should work pretty well. Let's see how this thing accelerates. Love it.